Hi, my name is Doug, and I would like to share with you a kind of a little dilemma I'm having uh, with this program, Sky Safari, and trying to operate it in Windows. If you've ever used Sky Safari, you know it's a really nice planetarium software. It'll let you see uh, kind of a map of the night sky, and it'll let you poke around and then learn uh, all kinds of information about the objects there. And I really like all that encyclopedia-like information. This is not a review of Sky Safari. It's more trying to figure out how to get Sky Safari to connect to uh, my telescope and for all that to work within Windows. So to do that, I've tried using a little program that I can download uh, called Wi-Fi Scope. And Wi-Fi Scope is available from the makers of Sequence Generator Pro. And you can just search for uh, Wi-Fi Scope Download, and it'll bring you to this uh, page. I'll just show Wi-Fi Scope Download. It'll bring you to Sequence Generator Pro. Um, they, they did this as a little giveaway, you know? They don't charge anything for it. It's a very kind of lightweight connector program that connects, um, it operates as a bridge between Sky Safari on, for example, Android, which works out great for Windows users because there is a program called BlueStacks that you can download to operate as a an emulator. What that means is it it pretends to be an Android um, phone inside your Windows software. So you download BlueStacks here, get the version that you want, 32 or 64, whatever you want. Download that, and I'm not going to do a comprehensive explanation of how to do all these pieces because what I'm really sharing is sometimes my connection goes bad, and I'm trying to find options, you know, alternatives for that. You download this emulator, and you you load BlueStacks into your Windows, and then you, what you do next is you download Sky Safari for Android. And you can get that wherever you get your Android uh, apps. So for instance, Sky Safari for Android here, uh, you might get it here at the Google Play Store. And um, operating within BlueStacks, it sort of tricks Google Play so that it can actually install Sky Safari inside BlueStacks inside Windows. Okay, so you're with me so far? Is that kind of clear as mud? Um, let's go back to Sky Safari now. So what you have to do in Sky Safari, you have to determine what your Wi-Fi is operating on, and you have to get the IP address that the, I, that the Wi-Fi is operating on. So let me show you how to do that real quick. Let me just show you a screen here. You go down here and click on this, uh, maybe right click on this little Wi-Fi symbol in your system tray. And you can say open network and internet settings and go to Wi-Fi here and then go to hardware properties. And that'll show you your IP version 4 address. So 30.177 or whatever yours happens to be. Then you have to go to Sky Safari and go to Settings. And inside of Settings, you choose Telescope Setup. And you have to choose the Mead LX200. Don't ask me why. I guess it's the language that you're using. Uh, you'll probably want to equatorial go-to mount if you have an equatorial mount, of course. Then put connect via Wi-Fi and don't have this box checked to auto-detect. Instead, put in the IP address manually, the same IP address you just captured that your Wi-Fi card is working on on your laptop. And then port 4030, I think, is going to work for you. Now, when you close that, so now that part's ready, now go to your uh, little Wi-Fi scope deal and say, listen. 
and you're listening on port 4030. So we'll get that out of the way. Now I'll go to Sky Safari and say scope and say connect. And what it has just done, it's connected to the scope. I'll go over here to sharp cap for a second. You can see here we're actually looking at the pull star. In fact, while we're here, let's zoom in. You can even see that it's actually a nice little double star. Polaris is actually a double. And this one's A and that one's the B component of the double star. So we're on Polaris and you can see now we're actually, um, we're, we're harmonized with the map. We can even pick like another star or whatever, wherever we wanted to go. And you can, you can watch the, uh, the map appear there. Let me go to this version and you'll be able to see the, the scope slewing over to Vega. And you can actually watch the little field of view rectangle. That's my field of view. And then we can go back to sharp cap and you can see that Vega has been brought into the picture. So that's Vega that's just slid into the picture. So I really like this. The problem is it does drop intermittently. Now I'm not gonna be able to demonstrate for you uh, the times that it drops because it it only happens intermittently. But I tell you what I'd like to do. Uh, because it does drop sometimes, and that's kind of annoying. Let me see. I'm going to go ahead and disconnect from it. I'm also going to go back to the um, Wi-Fi scope and stop listening. Okay. What I'd like to do is learn to use this tool and it's called um, ASCOM remote server. So you have to bring this up and once that comes up, there we go. So it, it does say an error on my Celestron focus motor, but I don't think that's a huge deal. It does detect the scope and it uh, assigns it this IP address, or it discerns that the ASCOM is listening on 127.0.0.1. And then this, whatever the one one, the five ones in a row are, and then it listens on port 32227 for discovery broadcasts. And it says it started successfully. Now, what I'd like to do, I understand that you go down here and you open up something called Alpaca Scope. And I have the latest version of that or one of the latest versions. It's a 2.0. Now I can start this. Notice I've got it set to listen on port 4030. I've got the remote server IP of 127.0.0.1. Yeah. And I've got these five ones here under the ASCOM remote port. The ASCOM telescope ID is zero. I've got that connected. So now this looks right to me. The one thing I don't know what to do, I don't know what protocol to put on. Let's try LX200 and let's say it's an equatorial north. So if I start this, shouldn't this somehow connect? But here it says, unable to connect to telescope ID zero. It's a bad request. Invalid host name. The request host name is invalid. Check configuration and press start. But no matter how much I check the configuration, I can never quite figure it out. What I'm doing wrong here. Maybe I shouldn't be listening on all interfaces. Um, auto discover as com remote. So you see, I'm kind of stymied on using this thing called alpaca scope. I would love to be able to use that because uh, the word on the street and among my friends is that this will be more dependable once I get our work up. 
but I can't so far. I can't get it to work. So if you know how to do this and can help me, I would appreciate it for now. I just have to keep using this kludgy approach and see now it, it it does work right now. So I'm just going to use it for right now, and when it drops, it drops. But it's just kind of annoying. Anyway, uh, good luck with trying to sort this out. If you like Sky Safari, maybe there's a solution here somewhere for you, and maybe you can help me figure out what I'm doing wrong on the alpaca scope. Sounds like an animal from South America or something, doesn't it? Thanks for listening to this, and I hope that uh, uh, I'll see you again in the next video. Take care. Bye.